This is the second video in which we explore add-ons related to weight painting. In the first one I showed how to use the Easy Weight add-on, which I totally recommend. In this video I am going to go over a bunch of smaller free add-ons that I found, and I hope you find some of them useful. And if you know of any other add-ons related to weight painting, let me know. You can now get access to all CG Dive tutorials, including my extensive paid courses, unreleased videos, and supporter-only content for just $5.99 a month. Check out academy.cgdive.com slash subscription. The first two add-ons that we are going to take a look at come from this repository by Bayrate. And Bay is an absolute legend in CG. If you don't know who he is, please do a quick Google search. So this repository is mainly about his shortcuts, but if you scroll down, he also has a bunch of add-ons. And I'm not interested in custom shortcuts right now, so I can just go to the add-ons folder, and I found two add-ons related to weight painting, mirror all vertex groups, and toggle weights. So to download them, just click on the Pi file, and then right-click on the row button, and save as, and that will save a Pi file. And then in Blender, you can go to Edit Preferences, Add-ons, click Install, and find the Pi file and install it like an add-on. Usually add-ons come as zip files, but some simpler add-ons are just Pi files. So the first add-on that we are going to take a look at is the Toggle Weights add-on. I'll activate it, and now if I go to Weight Paint mode, and look at the weights menu, there is toggle default weights. When you paint weights, you can use the add brush and the subtract brush, but you can also just use the mix brush and set the weight to zero if you want to subtract weights, and set weight to one if you want to add weights. And then with strength, you can adjust the strength of the brush. So for weight, you just need a value of zero or one, uh, nothing in between. And that's exactly what this operator does. If I click it, weight will be set to 1. And then if I use it again, weight will become 0. So if I right click on this operator and add a shortcut and set the shortcut to X, which I think is a safe shortcut to set, uh, then I can just press set here in the viewport and I can toggle weight between 0 and 1. And that is all this add-on does. It is very simple, but very practical. I think among all of the add-ons in this video, this one is the one that I'll most likely keep using. Now let's look at the other add-on, uh, mirror, mirror all vertex groups. If I enable it and go to Object Data Properties and check this menu here, you'll find the Mirror All Vertex Groups button. So what this does is, um, if I select the armature and shift select the mesh, go to Weight Paint mode, and let's say I set my options and I forget to set the symmetry settings. Okay, I can paint a little bit here on the arm and maybe here and a little bit here. Okay, and then I realize that I don't have symmetry. Then I can just go to this operator here and check the options. It allows you to mirror across all axes, unlike Blender's default symmetry, which only works on X. Then you have to decide which way. So this is positive X and this is negative x. You have to know this. Uh, you know it by looking at this gizmo here. You'll see that x points in this direction. So I want to copy from the positive x to the negative x. Then you have to set the naming pattern. I know that mine is .l and .r with capital letters. You can even use custom naming here. You can even use tolerance, which means that your mesh doesn't need to be perfectly symmetrical. And then you can press OK and that will mirror these changes that we did on the positive x side to the negative x side. Now, if you have easy weight, which I have disabled just for this tutorial, normally I would use it. It gives you these symmetry options, and here you have similar options for symmetrizing. So, and I covered this in the previous video, so that would be another way to symmetrize your weights. You're going to need it sooner or later, so it's good that we have multiple options for this. Next we have Local Weights Transfer. Here I'll assume that you know how to use transfer weights. I have a video in which I explain it. But if I enable Local Vertex Weight Transfer, 
I'll be able to transfer weights between meshes in the same object, whereas transfer weights works with two separate objects. So the way this works is, let's say that I have some sort of prop on this mesh, and I'm going to join it with the main mesh. Now, if I move the armature, this prop won't move with the arm. So I'll go to weight paint mode, actually to edit mode, and select the prop, then go to weight paint mode, weights menu, local weights transfer, and choose from unselected to selected. And then you can switch the setting from active group to all groups or just deform groups, which makes sense, and play with some settings. And you'll see that the weights were transferred to the prop. Um, some of the weights went to the spine bone, I guess. So you may want to do some weight painting. But these are the basics of local weight paint transfer. And another one from the same developer as local weight transfer, copy paste vertex weights. I'll be sharing all of these links with you and you can download it from here by clicking the zip button. Okay, I already have it installed, copy-paste vertex weights. When the add-on is active, you can go to edit mode and go to the vertex menu and activate copy-paste vertex weights. And this actually puts you in a special mode. Here you'll see control C, copy selected, control V, paste selected and shift and escape to exit. Now, if I go to weight paint mode, and select this bone, you'll see the kinds of weights that I have. So if I go to edit mode and let's say I select this loop of vertices and press Ctrl C, and then I'm going to select another loop and pay attention to the active vertex here. So I'm going to make sure that the exact same vertex is the active here below and then press Ctrl V. And then if I go to weight paint mode, let me see, Ctrl C and then in here, Ctrl V. Yeah, and these weights were copied from up here to down here. So this is not something that you will use in your day-to-day -day, um, character weight painting, but it can be useful for certain precision tasks. Another small add-on or additional operator, I should say, is remove unused vertex groups. If you already have easy weights, which again and again I recommend, your vertex weights menu will look something like this, and you have these batch delete operators, and they will allow you to batch delete empty or unused groups. This is useful when you need to really optimize your mesh for export and such. So if you want one more additional operator like this, you can download and install this add-on, activate it, and it will appear here in the same menu, remove unused vertex group. And that will purge all sorts of vertex groups that do not have any weights on them and it will optimize your mesh. Next we have a couple of add-ons from this creator here on Gumroad. One of their products is a paid one and I'm looking forward to reviewing it in another video. But for now, if you scroll down, there are three weights related add-ons here. One is a pop-up vertex group list. Another one is normalize unlocked and smooth unlocked. I'm mainly going to show the pop-up list, the other ones I didn't find as useful, but you can take a closer look if they look interesting to you. So if you install and activate the pop-up vertex group list and go to weight paint mode under weights, you'll find the pop-up vertex group list. Um, and if you activate it, it will give you a list of all groups that you can click and select. So if you don't have the armature selected right now, and you want to access different vertex groups without going to this menu, which is kind of small and uh, not easy to work with, then you can just use this list here, right? And switch your vertex groups. And I would highly recommend that you add it to your quick favorites. So I can easily activate it like this. You can also lock and unlock groups here. And a nice feature is the relevant groups. If I enter vertex select mode, and press C and select some vertices and then activate the list. This will show me only the groups that are connected to the selected vertices. 
So that's all for this little add-on. Again, I'm not going to go into more details about normalize unlock. I think that is similar to using normalize all, except that it takes these locks into account. And similarly, smooth unlock is similar to the smooth function, but, but it takes into account the locks. In the remaining minute or so, I'm going to show a couple of add-ons that you may want to take a look. I'm not personally using them, but they are related to weight painting, so maybe worth taking a look. We have weight flow, which is actually a very complex add-on. It attempts to really improve the weight painting workflow. It has really cool ideas like pressing the shift key should switch to blur tool and pressing control subtracts weights. So in theory, it sounds very good. Um, it has a bunch of features, but it just didn't work for me. Some of the features did work, uh, some didn't, but I couldn't get it to work consistently. So maybe your experience will be different. So uh, take a look and maybe give it a try. Here we have another collection of add-ons. If you go to releases here and download the source code, you can install it like an add-on. And it's actually a collection of add-ons. A lot of these functions actually look really interesting. So I may try to explore them in the future. Like this mesh retarget thing. I've never seen anything similar to it. Looks really cool. But as far as weight painting, there's this bleed option, which will allow you to expand a vertex group. That is similar to what we already have here. Um, we have weights levels. And that allows me to kind of expand the existing weights. So that's a similar function that works slightly differently. Give it a try if you need something like this. And the smooth loops feature looks very cool and very practical, but it just doesn't make sense to me right away. So I haven't been able to use it in practice so far. Another interesting one is this dynamic weight editing using geometry nodes, which I believe is a dynamic weights transfer tool. So you can use simple geometry to transfer weights to more complex geometry. And it looks very cool, but I haven't had the time to take a proper look at it. And surface heat diffuse skinning is an add-on that I've mentioned before in my videos. It's the same as automatic weights, but a little bit more robust, so you won't get bone heat weighting error. I've demonstrated this add-on in other videos, so you can watch them. Here I'm just mentioning it because it falls into this category of three add-ons that have to do with weight painting. I almost forgot to mention it, but there is a CG dive add-on related to weight painting. It's called X-Ray Weight Paint. I have a dedicated video about it, but the gist of it is that by default, when you weight paint, you only paint on the front of the faces. To really paint through the mesh, you have to disable front faces and switch fall off to project it. And it always bothered me that these options are disconnected like this. But once you set it up, you can paint through the mesh. As you can see, if I install and activate X-Ray Weight Paint and set things to default, the add-on creates this button here. So I just have to press it and it will disable front faces only and switch to project it and I can paint through the mesh. And if I disable it, it automatically switches to front faces only and sphere. And then I can only paint um, on the front of the mesh and not on the back. Switch it again and I'll be painting through. Don't forget to like, subscribe and check out academy.cgdive.com if you're interested in exclusive CG Dive content.